Welcome everybody to the and to the iBug Android Insight Call. Can you folks hear me now? Yeah, uh, we're recording now. And you Welcome, can hear me. Welcome everybody. Yay. Thank you. Welcome everybody to the iBug Android Insight <clears throat> Call. Today is Wednesday, February twenty first, twenty twenty four. And we're back in action for the second month of the new year. So I want to welcome everybody. This is our Android Insight, our iBug Android Insight. On this platform, we talk about everything Android. Anything, any device that runs on the Android platform is open to discussion, um, whether it is your cell phone, your smartphone, your tablet, your Alexa devices, your Google devices, um, Fire TVs, you know, so, and I know there are some Braille devices out there that run on the Android platform. So if, if it runs on the Android platform and we can help out, that's what we're here for. So, this is an open call. We're an open community where we help one another. So I just want to say welcome to the call. Uh, my name is Ava Caruth. I am one of your Zoom hosts. Hershey Trevetti is my other is our other host for the call as well. So we're going to go on and get started with just a little bit of housekeeping stuff right now. Um, we are hosted by iBug, so you can go to iBugToday.com and you will find a list of all the uh, all things iBug offers up there as well as be able to sign up to get their news, their monthly newsletter, as well as up to dates when things are happening. If you want more information about our iBug Android Insight show, if you've missed a show, you can go to the website and go under the iBug Android Insight tab and you will find all of our past shows listed up there as well so you can always go back and listen to a show if you missed a show um we all i bug also host a friday night movie every friday night this friday night the movie is if i remember correctly oh god past mm. lives so that is the movie mm. for friday night so that starts um at 7 30 i believe they open up so come and do the social hour and enjoy a movie it's, it's just an audio version of a descriptive version of it so i want to say welcome again to our show i'm hoping everybody has come with some wonderful questions this evening I see we have a lot of people on here tonight. Some I haven't seen before, some I have. So I want to welcome all the new members that have may have come one time before or a couple of times, but who have decided to come back. And I want to welcome all of our regulars that join us every month. So right now, I would like to have everybody go around. If you just tell us a little bit about yourself, your name, um, where are you calling from for new people? How did you hear about us and share what Android device that you have? All right. Can you hear me now? Yes, <laughs> we making can. Sure. Oh, fantastic. All right. So my name is Martin. I'm from uh, Toronto, Canada, and uh, I was invited here by Hershey, actually. So thank you so much. This is pretty neat. Um, I currently have... Uh, a Pixel 6a and a Jelly Star, the uh, Unihertz Jelly Star, which is a very, very small um, Android phone. And it's just as um, 
um, efficient as the pixel. So it's pretty cool. Anyways, okay. thank you. Well, welcome, Martin. Hershey. All right. I hear you, Hershey. Welcome, Hershey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. This is uh, Foster Brown. I'm calling from Houston, Texas. And right now, I'm doing a Zoom on my Pixel 7 Pro. I also have a, a, a Chromecast with Google TV and a couple of A-Lady speakers and uh, some other Android stuff I can't remember right now. <laughs> well, welcome back, Foster. Hi, this is Quentin, um, Houston, Texas. Uh, I have some A-Ladies, uh, Fire TVs, Fire TV sticks, uh, Samsung TVs, uh, smart TVs. Um, I use the Samsung Fold 5, the Z Fold 5, which I love. Um, of course, I have the watch, my Note 10, I have the Tab S8. I mean, it's it's a lot of Android, <laughs> a Amazon tablet somewhere around here. Um, some I like, some I don't. Some work great, some don't. Um, I love Talkback, Voice View, or yeah, it's Voice View, right? Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> well, welcome, but Quentin. Hey guys, my name is Joel. I'm from California. I've been, been a couple of times before, but it's still pretty new. And I have, um, uh, let's see, what do I have? A Galaxy phone, um, iSense TV, which uses uh, an Android or the Android the TV OS, whatever, the A Lady. That's about it. I always learn a little something. I always get a hot tip when I, when I show up. So thank you very much. Okay, well, welcome. Kevin R has joined the meeting. I'm Deanna Bruce, and I'm from Illinois. I'm using the S21, which I just um, bought off my daughter because I'm an ATI, and I'm learning relearning the Android. I used I used uh, S9 for about 10 years <laughs> and and then um, had to switch to an iPhone because of my hearing aids. But I do have four A ladies. Um, I've got a couple smart TVs. I've got fire sticks. Um, a Roku on one of the TVs, which I have no clue how to use and make it accessible. <laughs> so my husband does that one. <laughs> and that's about it. Well, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, the Roku actually has a, a screen reader on it as well. I can't remember what the uh, key combination to make it work. But uh, I'll have to go look because I have one here. Very cool. That would be so neat. I just mm -hmm. found out about the fire stick through um, one of my other friends. And he told me how to turn on the voice for the fire stick. And I was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, anybody else would like to introduce themselves? Hello, everyone. My name is Anna. Welcome, Anna. Hello, Hershey. Good evening, everybody. It's Hershey from Central Florida. Welcome, everybody. Okay, so is there anybody else that would like to introduce themselves? And this is Renee. Welcome, Renee. 
Yeah, from Cleveland area, I have Samsung TV, Google TV, Google Chromecast, A ladies, G ladies, Pixel phone and watch, and that I can't even think of what else. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so sounds like the rest of us. Yep. We all have a, a a variety of them in mm -hmm. our homes. Yes. So is there anybody else that would like to introduce themselves? This is Richard from New York. Welcome, Richard. And a lot has changed since the last time we had spoke after a week and a half in the hospital. Um, I have now gotten a second Alexa, I have also now a Samsung Tablet Lite 6 Gen, a Revel B Plus 5G Android phone, so I also have a keyboard now as well, and it is a low-key, I think it's a 828 or an 820 keyboard now, so things have kind of went up for me a little bit, you know since then and I might sound a little winded and breathless here because I am still on oxygen from what has happened to me. Glad to have you back, sir. And uh, go ahead, Jody. Uh, you got your hand raised? Yeah, um, just to let everybody know, and Jody, you do not have to raise your hand during our call. We just ask that just everybody be respectful when you hear a low, just state your name and wait until you are acknowledged by myself or Hershey. But you are welcome to go ahead and speak. Speak. Her, her audio is not connected. Copy. Exactly what happened to me, I had to change computers. <laughs> Hello, this is Catrice. Excuse me. Hey, no problem. It's okay. Yes. Hey, good evening. Okay. Um, you said you got a keyboard. Uh, what's the best? I have an Android, a um, Samsung 10. What's the best keyboard I can use to connect to my phone? Like sometimes I want to write notes, and um, uh, one of my I got an app that's on my computer on my PC, and on my phone also. Um, it won't let me do the. It won't let me do the. Um. U.S. English Braille, it won't let me type on Braille on the keyboard. I mean, I'm on the um, computer. Okay, okay, Catrice, we're going to um, get to your question real quick. Okay. I want to get through all the introductions first. Just make sure okay, thank you introduce themselves. I'm sorry. Okay. No, you're fine. You're fine. Welcome, <laughs> no, no, welcome no, to you're the good. party. Yeah. That's all you're ready, ready to go. You're but... ready. I like yeah. that. <laughs> So we okay. know Catrice is going to be our first one off the bat, okay? All right, so is there anybody? Has Jody got her audio? If not, keep continuing on if y'all want to introduce yourselves, where y'all coming from. This is Bill from South Daytona. Can anybody hear me? Nope. That. Hey, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, hey, at least you got a sense of humor. That's good. I love it. <laughs> Anybody else out there? It's Janice from Maryland. Members? There we go. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. No other Canadians. I feel lonely. <laughs> Thought we would uh, have a you know a few more invitations. Who's out there? I mean, you can always move to Houston. Quick, quick, quick. <laughs> That's <is> true. <laughs> I did live in California for two years, so it's always that. We won't hold that against, against <laughs> you. I promise. Okay. Good. <laughs> We appreciate hey. this. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that y'all joining All right. us. Hey, this is Foster Quentin. Hey, Foster. Don't start now. I won't be done. I'm a native born <laughs> raised in California. Don't start now. I won't be done. All right, y'all. 
I, I love California. I was trained in California, so it's good. There we go. Mm-hmm. There we go. This this is this is fun because it's everybody's coming from everywhere these days. Uh, past what it's been four years now. We're going on. So yep. I really appreciate yeah uh, everybody out in the audience and uh, everybody's input. So I don't know if if you're ready for the show. Uh, start well, I'll be glad show. to do a transfer program with the one from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I get, I get that, I get that. <laughs> I'll transfer to Canada, and you can transfer here. Okay, <laughs> let's go ahead and get. I see Jody's audio is still not connected, so as soon as she gets connected, right? And if anybody else yeah. wants to introduce themselves, feel free. Yeah. But, uh... but um, we can go ahead and get started. And Catrice was our first question. Catrice, would you mind uh, repeating that question for us? Uh, you're trying to get a couple things done there. Okay. Yeah, y'all ready for me now? Oh, yeah. We're ready for you now. <laughs> I'm going to say I ran her <laughs> off her. She, oh my gosh. Let me quit. <laughs> okay. Oh, Lord. I, would just, um, I have a, a Samsung uh, 10. Plus, and I was wondering what would be a good keyboard I could use, a, a good physical keyboard I could use with that, because um, um, the, the, I have um, Microsoft uh, 365 on my phone, but it won't let me type. Um, like, um, I can do better, you know, if I'm texting or something, I can t- use my Braille keyboard on my phone, my soft keyboard on my phone, yeah. the Braille, and um, when I'm texting and stuff. But when um, but on um, that's on that app, particular app, it won't let me um the it won't let me do the braille. So I was wondering what would be a good physical keyboard I could use. So, are you still looking for like a braille sort of like I- I interface? Because if so, like the Hable One might be an option. It's a bit more expensive though. Well, um, yeah, that's the problem. So, but if you want like a full size keyboard, um, like a smaller keyboard, there yeah. there are some on Amazon that. Are, they're like thirty bucks, and they work really well. Somebody like said Pluckerby. Somebody said Pluckerby and and I something. By the way, yeah. just um, actually, uh, what is uh, what is what is your budget in this uh, in this debacle? Thirty dollars. <laughs> okay, okay. Because right. I'm just saying, it could be thirty or it could be three hundred. So yeah, uh, I, I usually cut it down to about uh, halfway through, you know, half one one fifty. The Logitech MX Mechanicals, for example, runs nice... about one fifty, and yeah. uh, it has three <laughs> buttons on it. Many of the Logitechs do, even the mm-hmm. cheaper. Uh, uh, portable ones that they got to call the 380 and then the 480 models running mm-hmm. about 30 i think the 480 is about 30 bucks and then the 380 is about 25 bucks mm-hmm. yeah. but um those those usually work out because you, you get the three toggles and uh, like right now i am using the mechan the mx mechanical keyboard where if i want to hook up my phone to my s22 ultra hook that up I might want to hook up another device on the third button that could wake that device or toggle it. And then uh, uh, button number one will then toggle my computer. So it has USB. And then if you have any uh, device with USB uh, capability, you could have a dongle that gets connected to it like a laptop. So Yeah. They also have the uh, the mini as an option as well. So the mini doesn't have the number pad and it's a lot mm-hmm. smaller so you can throw it in pretty much any bag that you want and stuff like that yeah, I'm like that's what i have i want something smaller that i could take to bible study or something yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah this is foster yeah the, the the mini is great um what i like about logitech they have a reputation because they've been around for years and they've been making peripherals for computers and whatnot for years and <clears throat> Like Kershaw was saying, most of their keyboards, you can uh, connect three Bluetooth devices. Yeah. And those could be uh, Android. Um, They could be Android. They could be Apple. Or it could be Windows. So, like, sometimes I'll have my – I have a big one like you got, Hershey, that MX one with the mechanical keys. And so I'll have it connected to my my Windows PC. 
my uh, iPad and to and I'll have the other connection to my uh, my Pixel Seven Pro and just flip flop, you know, switch between the one whichever device I want to use at that particular time. So I can get and the it, mini. So I yeah, get the yeah. Logitech Mini. Yeah, the that's mini a good one. Good it, I I charged it. I've had it for almost a year and a half, and I think I've mm-hmm. charged it twice. So <laughs> the battery life is ridiculous on it. Oh. Mm. So the better, so the um, Logitech Mini would go with with your phone. You can hook mm-hmm. it to your phone. Your you can phone. Your, and your tablet too. Your phone, okay, your tablet, you and your tablet? PC. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. They work with. They pretty much work with any device. Basically, oh. the Mini just cuts off the number pad. Just to think of it that way. Right. Whereas the full size, and the full size is pretty sleek. Uh, yeah. Weight wise, uh, kind of bulky. Kind of has some heft to it, but uh, are you looking for like portability as moving it from room to room, or yeah, I'm looking, for, I'm looking for portability. I'm looking for portability so I can put it in my bag and take it with me. <laughs> okay. The mini would be best then, I guess. I mean, uh, I, would, I would suppose so. I mean, I'm just looking at mine just. Cutting the keyboard off there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't need a number pad, then the mini's perfect. But if I need a number pad, then what would be a, a, a more option uh, another one for portability? Um, there's another Logitech. Um it's it's a little bigger than the mini, but it does have mm-hmm. a keypad. Actually, they actually make a combo because this is a great thing I like about Android. You can actually get like Logitech, they sell combos and it's the keyboard and the mouse. And you can get like the keyboard, the mouse, and it even includes a Bluetooth receiver for devices that don't have Bluetooth. Mm-hmm. And you can get something like that. I think is correct me if I'm wrong, guys, like fifty or sixty bucks for the both the mouse and the keyboard. And they're still really portable. Okay. Well, okay. This is Richard. You can also get what I have picked up. It's the Logitech, like they're saying, and it's Bluetooth, and it's the uh, Logitech 585, and it's Bluetooth capability, and it actually has a holder. If the phone can fit in there, if the device can fit in there, it actually has a slot on the keyboard itself for the phone to sit in it if it can fit. And you can bring it wherever you want, and it's got the numbers on it, and it's actually low too. I only picked it up for about thirty something with tax, nice. so oh, it actually has the holder for it. If you if the phone will fit or if the device will fit, the holder is right there on the keypad, no wires, no nothing, and it's got the number pad. <laughs> And it's the uh, Logitech 585, and gotcha. I picked it up. I'll get the Logitech 585. That way, it can hold my phone. I think it would be yeah. better on my phone because I I'm um, have problem arthritis, so I I think that mm-hmm. it would be better. You know, instead of holding the phone all the time. Thank you. There you go. Yeah, Can you have your mouse going over? Wait, wait, just a quick reminder, please. Uh-huh. Um, just whenever you, anybody wants to answer, please announce yourself first and then wait to be acknowledged because we tend to be talking over each other. And then I did hear someone come in, so I just want to give a reminder to everybody, especially when you're coming into the room, we are being recorded, so we like to try to keep the recordings as clean as possible. Thank you. And go ahead. Oh, this is Katrisa again. I was wondering, how can I, um, can y'all, did y'all hear my um, voiceover? I was just trying to figure out how can you, um, is there any way that you could, uh, um, not let the other person hear the voiceover while you're trying to scan for the right buttons. We didn't hear it. Oh, you did? Oh, nope, nope. 
you're good. Oh, okay. Well, some, um, I think I was on a Zoom and they heard my voice over and I think, um, I don't know if it's their phone or what. Try or moving it, try moving around on your, on your phone. See if we can hear it. I hear it, but do you hear it? Nope. Mm -mm. Nope, you're good. Okay, great. Yeah. Maybe it's your phone or their phone or Zoom, because I was on a Zoom at, um, thing and um and I think they heard my um voice over. But I know on my PC, um there's a, a shortcut where you can uh turn your speech speech off and um well you can turn your speech off on the voiceover. You can do a, a three finger double tap. That'll turn uh -huh. the speech off. Uh huh. But then oh, you okay. won't be able to scan for things. So yeah. But, but it's a toggle, so you can turn it on yeah. and off that way. Yeah, and on my PC, um, especially like uh, Jaws, you can turn the speech off, but you, you can navigate. It'll if you navigate through the windows, it'll tell you what window you're in, and you can be able to um, you know. Yep. But thank you. This is Janice. Yes, Janice. So back to the Logitech keyboards. Um, <laughs> I, I'm. <laughs> I want to make certain I understand so i can get a keyboard that i can connect via bluetooth to my phone or whatever other device and then i can use the manual keyboard to type in whether it's text or emails or whatever instead of using the keyboard on the device is that what this keyboard that you guys are talking about does this, this is, is my... faster oh go ahead faster yeah, that that's correct. It will it you know it, it, it whatever app you open, um, mm -hmm. you can type you can type in that app. Um, and then for me, I'm low vision, so right. then I like I like to use it because then I have more screen real estate now that I don't have the the keyboard. Have the keyboard up. up. Yeah. Right. So, I, yeah. I'm yeah I'm low vision and I have the samsung fold and i got that because it had more real estate but it would be even better if the keyboard didn't pop up on the screen and i could you know have a keyboard that i could pair and i could i can type a lot faster if i could use a you know a regular keyboard instead of the keyboard on the screen okay all yeah, right richard. yeah go ahead richard I uh, I noticed that too because I asked on one of the meetings of what would be the best keyboard because I actually had got tired of that where it pops up two things I got tired of one is I'm chasing the keyboard all around the screen to find the letters because it keeps moving on me the second reason I got tired of it is because of passwords when you have to put in a password on my devices, I realized when I'm touching the screen, it goes to this thing called password keyboard. And when it's talking to me, I always hear bullet, bullet, bullet. It's not giving me the letter. It's not giving me the words. So a keyboard sitting in front of me, I know where the letters are. I know what letter I'm pushing, what numbers I'm pushing. So when the keyboard says password keyboard, it can say bullet all it wants, but I know what password I'm putting in because I'm not guessing. Right, so you know the I, keyboard, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so a keyboard is the best route to go, and yes, the Logitech the, the logic is, when they mentioned it on other meetings, I said, you know what, let me look into that. Let me see what that is about. And the one I got is, is to me, to me, I'm, I'm not speaking for everybody, mm -hmm. it's, it's great because it, it has the holder for the phone or any other devices right on the keyboard. It's Bluetooth. I can bring it wherever I want. And all I got to do is really just turn the keyboard on with the switch and bang, it's instantly connected to whatever I'm around. Cool. Oh, this could be a game changer. You said the Logitech 585. That's the one I have, yes. But mm -hmm. I will say I can't speak for myself, so search around and look. But that is a cheaper one. 
because I am budget too, and but the one I have is awesome. I you just got to be careful now when you pair it to the devices that you're pairing it to. So I have it to my phone and I have it to my TVs, and so if the keyboard is close to that device, mm. when you turn it on, it's going to connect to every single device you have it connected to. Mm -hmm. so, so, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. So, two questions. If you don't turn it on, if you don't pair it, then your regular keyboard is going to pop up, correct? Yeah, yes. correct. This is okay. Richard. If you have the keyboard and you don't pair it, the keyboard that pops up is just going to be what's on your phone okay. or what's on your television. And the second question was back to what the original woman was asking. Is the 585 the one that has the keypad? Because I, I like the keypad rather than the numbers on top of the, on the top row. Oh, it's, it's got it all. Oh, this is Richard again. It's got both. It's got the key numbers one mm -hmm. through zero, zero on the top, uh -huh. and the but key. it's also got them on the side, and it's okay. got the letters like all the keyboard does. Right, right. Okay, thank you. Um, but what I was going to say before with when you pair it to a TV or you pair it to your phone, when you turn the keyboard on, it's going to instantly connect to all of that if it's close by. So what you mm -hmm. do, if that happens, just go into your settings and it's going to say disconnect. Don't go to forget device, just go to disconnect device. So if I want to disconnect from my TV because I don't want it to run my TV, just say disconnect. If I don't want it to run my phone, just say disconnect. And it's not going to run your TVs or anything like that. It's going to run what you want. But it's going to stay in Bluetooth connections for just don't go to the button where it says forget device. Because if you forget device, you're going to have uh -huh. to repair it eventually later on. Okay. And it's L-O-G-I-T-E-C-H, all one word? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Great. Perfect. Richard, uh, this is Martin. I'm, I'm curious because the the, what, the Logitech I have here actually has uh, shortcut keys to be able to uh, move between devices. Does this one not have that, or that's this Logitech 585? I don't know because I just really had it very short. Okay. And when I paired it to certain devices and I turn the switch on, and all of a sudden, my TVs are activating, and my phone is activating. I'm like, hello, I'm not asking for you to do all this. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, just, I just went in the settings and said, you know what, let me see. And I made the mistake, and I said, forget device. Yeah. And then I had, now I want the keyboard for my TV, and I'm like, where did my TV go? Yeah. Oh, great. I forgot the device, so I had to repair it, and I'm doing my own learning still to this day, but I found a button that says disconnect. Yeah. And I'm and so it says disconnect device and it will always remember the device just go to connect or disconnect and so it will not forget device so you never have to repair it just go into settings go to bluetooth and say disconnect device or reconnect device and this is a chance i have one more question i um i also use the google assistant i use that a lot so it'll you know to go back and forth maybe between the two because i think i use the google assistant a lot for text messages but this sounds like something that would really work better for like emails for me and stuff, the longer, longer things that I really can't dictate. So going back and forth between the two would work. Yeah, this is Foster. Yeah, that that that's what I do. Like if I'm just mm -hmm. doing a text message, a quick shout, I'll I'll use the 
I'll either use the assistant or I'll tap the, you know, the microphone on the keyboard and do that mm -hmm, message. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But like you said, if it's something longer, I'll use the keyboard. And okay. uh, Richard, your keyboard does do three. You can plug it up to three different devices. There's switches for Bluetooth 1, Bluetooth 2, and Bluetooth 3. So that, that keyboard, I was thinking about getting that keyboard years ago. And you can switch between... Uh, uh, three devices you just I, I don't remember where the buttons are on there but you can switch between three devices so you don't have to have all your devices on one you can you can have three separate devices one on each each key and do you think um, it, is it it's martin here do you think it's the uh, fn key with f1 two and three like every it could it could be because that one's a little different and that one's also one of the um the 585 has been around for a while. It's one of their older models, just like the uh, like Hershey mentioned the 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 380. Um, I used to have a 380, but then there's another model. If you're not interested in having the 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 uh, number pad on the side, there's a 480, and the four the 480 has a uh, it has a slot too where you can uh, put your tablet or smartphone in it as well but it it just doesn't have the uh the keep the um the number pad on the right side this is richard um yeah mine the one you're mentioning foster does it has the numbers one through zero on top but also the number pad on the right side and i did not know about the that you can actually just push a button to where whatever one you want, because I got my smart TVs, which are two, and my phone. So when I turn it off, everything is fine. But then when I turn the keypad on, everything is at my phone, both televisions and both rooms, because I'm so close to the devices. Every All three devices are activating. I'm like, uh so the way I was doing it is the way I said. I just go into settings, go to Bluetooth, and find a device, my TVs or my phone that I don't want to connect, and I just say disconnect that device. And so I didn't know I can really do it on the keypad. Thanks. I'm excited. This is – I can't wait to try it. All right, y'all. That's a lot awesome. of good information about right. keyboards. Y'all gonna make me go out and buy a couple. <laughs> yeah, one, a couple. Right. Anybody else has Good any question. questions would you, or comments? Would you spend a dollar a day, you know, just literally a dollar a day for a year, $365, would you pay that for a keyboard? If it was a good keyboard, I would, yeah. It's if it's an you know, if it's an investment, you know, so, you know, you were asking day. the woman. How much, about how much did you say? A dollar a day for 365 days. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want my, my keyboard now. I, I don't want to wait 365 days. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. $365. You know, come on. I love but, my I mean, you keyboard. were talking about budget. <laughs> I'd spend more than $30, you know, but I, I want it to be a solid good piece of equipment you know i'm willing to pay more if it's a good piece of equipment you know agreed yep i i do have one that's done in aluminum and it was but it only pairs to one device at a time but it works really well um and you know got it off of amazon and uh, i really it, i it looks like an apple keyboard actually and it's you know a quarter of the price so but um i do like the multi-device connections um that's really nice because you can go from your phone to your computer and it's seamless so you hear a text it's like okay i'm just gonna go check it out and you don't even have to take your phone out of your pocket or anything like that's pretty neat but that's just a geek in me though <laughs> fantastic thank you is Foster. Go ahead, Foster. I, I, I'm out geek all y'all. I'm out geek all y'all. Geekologist? I have a gooseneck. Uh, no. <laughs> yep, I have a I have a gooseneck um 
a gooseneck tablet holder so I can sit anywhere in my house with my tablet in, in the, uh, in the, in the holder, in the stand, like it's a floor standing gooseneck holder. And then I'll put my lap, my, uh, my uh, keyboard in my lap and I can, you know, type and do emails and everything around the house and nice. I don't have to hold a tablet. So, and it, it's perfect cause you can adjust it, you know, uh, you can adjust it high or low depending on, you know, how high your seat is and stuff mm. like that. So, yeah. This is Renee. Go ahead, Ms. Renee. I was just, just getting ready to tell Foster, oh, I have a gooseneck too, until he said he had a floor standing one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, you out geeked me. All right. Uh, you, well, you, you can go ahead and slap the card on your forehead. That's all right. <laughs> this is Richard. I don't know, Thank Foster, you. if I'm going to be anywhere near close to you but mine is not a stand inside but i can bring mine everywhere i want and anywhere i want and outside inside bring it to a park bring it to an area because it's just a folder book protective case and it can sit anywhere i want it to sit and i can also bring the case with the uh, keyboard with that too it's a uh, universal protective case to it and it folds over the case and it folds into itself and it folds over the tablet and <laughs> it's um uh, it, it goes to a nine inch to a ten inch. It's a universal, it can protect a nine inch or a ten inch. This is good. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. You You're want to go on? Okay. Um had the hab the Hable one. Um, the, what type of braille layout does it have? Does it have the um one where you um? Does it have the normal braille keyboard, or the the um, or the other type of braille keyboard where you um use your left hand on one side? The vertical. I'm sorry. Yeah. Does it have the horizontal braille keyboard or the vertical braille keyboard? I prefer her horizontal. I'm just used to horizontal. All right, that's a fantastic question. I, I I wondered the same. I think how I wondered is it six keys or eight keys altogether. But uh, if anybody has tried it on any devices or uh, taught it to anybody or anything like that, please. Sorry, which one is this? Or which uh, device? Any any Hable One device? Oh, so the Hable One, Hable yeah, it's keyboards. It's set up like a Braille cell. So one, two, three is on your left and four, five, six, six is on your right. So it is vertical and you have to type away from your body, which is a bit weird. Um, yeah. But um, you can also uh, move it, like you can make it, so you can flip it, is what I'm trying to say. Um, it, it's, it's an interesting little device. Um, I don't like the price point, unfortunately, but, um, and I've been trying to use it a bit more. What I find with it is that it, it buzzes way too much for my, because it vibrates every time you do something. And for some people, I guess that's great for me. It's like, okay, I, I, I don't need that much vibration. I just want to be able to type Braille. <laughs> so... But it's like, uh, if you have an organization around you that might be able to show it to you, I think it would be a, a good experience so you could figure out, is it for me or not, right? So. Yeah, I'm used to using a horizontal where, um, you know, your braille is on your left and your right, but it's, you know, yeah. it's across, and I'm used yeah. to that. Yeah, um, there's, so the, um, what's that? The orbit reader. Yeah, or sorry, the Orbit Writer is something that you'd probably want to look into. That one's cheaper. It's about a hundred bucks. Wow, um, Orbit Writer. Yeah, cool. the Orbit Writer. Yeah, you can, can get I... it from AT oh, guys. Sorry. Go ahead. Can I make a, a suggestion? Yeah. If you don't, if you don't have much money, um, the NLS Braille Reader that they give out for free. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Will also, it's nice and compact and small, mm -hmm. and it will connect to your phone. Cool. Church, I, I need to talk about that. Um, 
If you are on Android, it will not connect to your phone yet if you have the NLS e-reader from HumanWare. Oh, um, no. It will for iPhone, not for Android, I'm unfortunately. Sorry. I've, it's I've annoying. Got, I've got both, and I haven't tried it. I didn't try it with my Android, so. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I love <laughs> Braille on my Android, and I wish I could have my e-reader uh, work with it. It's annoying because they've oh. done a good job with the Braille. Well, I'm sorry for interrupting then. <laughs> what did what did you say that what did you say the orbit rider? Orbit rider, yeah. You can get it from AT guys. Okay. A AP guys? Uh, AT AT oh, as in AT assistive guys? yeah. Assistive technology. AT Is it guys. ATGuys.com? I think so, yeah. You can you get it from Amazon? I, uh well, I don't know. Let me check. <laughs> Because okay. I, I know Maxi Aids has stuff on Amazon, so hold on a sec. Do you think Maxi Aid has an orbit rider? I AT will guys look. would be your better choice. Yeah. Okay. 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 Does anybody else have any questions or comments or suggestions? Hey, I'm this from is Houston. I have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. All right, Gail. Okay. Um. I'm having problems. I have a, a Samsung Galaxy X S20, and all of a sudden, it's not uh, doing my media. But when I try to open up media, it's not playing. So I don't know. I, I thought I might need an update. I did an update, and it's still not playing. If I go to Facebook and try to listen to a video, it's, it won't play. Go to YouTube, it won't play. Any suggestions on what I can do? Have you checked your volumes? This is Martin. Yes, I have. Okay. <laughs> this is Quentin. Um, have you checked? Um, a lot of times, the different medias will be pre-muted. Mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason I, sometimes it's like why is it but like when you go to youtube it might be pre-muted so mm -hmm. I, would, I would double check that to make sure the actual video is not muted um and you know even facebook because when you yeah when you, you know how when you go to youtube and it says uh at the top it usually say mute off or something like that right right yeah and it won't play though it, you, it, know, so. you still get no sound I was getting no sound. Okay. Yeah. This is Janice. I've noticed that they pre-mute. Why do they do that? It, it's hang, a... on a, hang on a minute, please. I hear we have some background noise where someone has a phone ringing. Can y'all please mute? <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. That's an accessibility thing. It's Martin here. I, I work in the accessibility field. So um, when you go to a new website, and stuff like that, you want to have things muted so that it doesn't auto play. So, yeah, you mm -hmm. can think. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so the other thing you can you might want to try is I don't know if you have any Bluetooth headsets or anything like that, but try it with that and see if you can get sound from there. Can, then you might be able to hone in on what is actually. Um, not making it play. I, it's it's that's okay. I, you know, I haven't tried that. I'll try with my headphones, but that that's my second question. Uh, I have some Galaxy buds, and I don't know. All of a sudden, they just keep jumping off the Bluetooth. They'll play for a while, then they jump off, and then they go on and they jump off. Anybody I'm running? Ever? I'm running into that problem myself. I'm 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 talking too much. I'm I'm so sorry, but. Um, on my Jelly Star, my my Bluetooth keeps cutting out. It still says that it's connected, um, mm -hmm. but TalkBack isn't going through them. So yeah, I, I don't have a solution, unfortunately, <laughs> just yet. I'm still troubleshooting it. So okay. Well, I'll, I'll be on all the time. If you have a solution, let me know. <laughs> I will. Now, I don't know if it has anything to do with um, the Bluetooth portion of it, but I wear hearing aids and and 
I've noticed when I've got my hearing aids connected to the phone, no videos will play sound. Not even my ring doorbell will play sound unless I disconnect the Bluetooth. That's interesting. <laughs> this That's is Richard. Annoying. I have ran into the same problem where I'm on music or I'm on YouTube when I click into something and it is not playing any sound. Now, I, again, I'm not able to speak for what is happening with the devices, but I don't understand why it could be in settings somewhere or it's different settings to the different apps I go into, but I click into music and I'm playing a music and it says it's playing, but I'm not hearing anything. So I just turn volume up and I start hearing it. So the volume is down low and I start hearing it as I turn it up. And I don't understand why volume was turned down. I do the same thing with YouTube. I go into YouTube, nothing is happening, but yet it says it's playing. Mm -hmm. And I turn it up on my phone or I turn up and I start hearing it. So I don't know if it's automatically turned down in volume or it's automatically just muted. Like the one gentleman said, you might want to try volumes or it's just automatically muted. On mine devices, all I did was just hit volume up and I start hearing the sound because the volume is down low and I don't understand why. This is Quentin. Um, so there's a couple things with that. If you have multiple devices connected, um, so let's say you take your earbuds and you connect them to mul you know multiple different devices and they're around you, it's going to connect to in a sense, kind of the dominant one. So usually the newest device it's going to connect to in general, only because technology is a little better. So it quick connects. Um, that is an issue because especially these newer devices, I, I want to say in the last at least five years, they do retain settings for various things you connect so um you know you connected your earbuds to say your android phone well it kept the settings on the volume that you use then you connected to we'll say your iphone and it could save that you connected it to a tablet and it saved that so that's also something to look at um the other thing is settings like going into the settings to double check that um, something's not muted or the volume's low because you will have apps and programs that have their own volume setting, you know, aside, like you'll have mm -hmm. your music setting aside from talk back. So you're like, Oh, talk, you know, talk back. Mm -hmm. I can't hear it. And it's because when you went to turn the music down, you actually return, you know, and I know it tells you, but it's, there are some times when it won't tell you that you're turning mm -hmm. it down and you'll turn it all the way down or, you know, you're tapping and hitting side keys and, you know, volume keys. And all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, it, the volume was where I wanted it. And now I can't hear nothing. So that's kind of one of those things you double check um, with, with issues like this. Yeah, I was running into that recently. I I didn't know that I had forgotten that I had connected my iPhone uh, to my my Pixel Buds, and I was on my Android phone, but the iPhone was grabbing it. It would it was like okay, well, why can I hear anything? All of a sudden, it's like okay, and then go turn Bluetooth off on my iPhone, and it started working okay. But yeah, it's it is. <laughs> It's a bit challenging sometimes when you have too many devices. Yeah, I I have that issue um, because I was testing earbuds before I was buying them. So I had like five different pair and I connected them to my phone, my tablet, 
my PC and I just was trying to see, okay, this one sounds this, this one sounds good. Well, when I finally chose one, um, you know, it was connected. Everything was good. But because I'm sitting at my PC, I have my tablet on my left. My phone is next to it. You know, my <laughs> switch is next to it. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'd go to answer a call, like a phone call. And so, you know, tap the earbud, right? Well, it would start playing YouTube <laughs> video on my PC. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what's what's happening? And I'm like, why is that playing? And so I'm over here fumbling, and then I get an alert, like, you know, on my tablet, since it's all connected. You know, it's all Samsung, so... I'm getting an alert on my tablet, which is the same alert on my phone, which is the same alert on my watch, but it comes through and I'm like, wait, where, where's this coming from? Cause I wasn't paying attention. So I don't know which device it came from. So it's like, wait, what, what's happening here? So you, you just have to watch when you connect multiple devices to things. This is Janice. Yes, ma'am. So I think I had a similar something. So I was in my husband's car and I paired my phone to, you know, his car. And we went on a road trip, came back, you know, whatever. And um, then, you know, I'm in the house and I'm on Zoom calls or whatever. And every time he would come home, my call would drop or if I was listening to an audio book, it would go silent. And I, I was like, something's happening when you break the plane of the house, when the garage door goes <laughs> up, I'm like, what is it? You know, I, and then come find out. So when the car came in the garage, yep. the pairing was going to the car. It's like yep. you said, it's like the alpha pairing, you know, <laughs> it's the strongest one. So then I just, you know, told him to drop it, you know, disconnect it from the car. You know, I thought it would be convenient if I'm always paired and you don't have to pair it every time you get in the car. But, you know, <laughs> so I was like, just disconnect it because it was causing too much grief. You know, I'd be in the middle of a presentation and then it would drop. I'm like, oh, oh, oh wow. <laughs> My uh, my neighbor was, uh, this is Martin, my neighbor was doing karaoke this weekend and his karaoke, karaoke is very horrible and it's very loud. And all of a sudden on my Android, it says, this speaker wants to connect. So I, I figured, well, that's his karaoke machine. I said, okay, so I connected <laughs> and I started playing talk back on it. And all of a sudden the, uh, the karaoke stopped. It was amazing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. This Renee. Go ahead. Um, something that Quentin said made me think about. I'm wondering if this is by design with TalkBack on uh, the Pixel phone or not. But a, a lot of times when I've closed out my music or I've stopped listening to an article with um, reading mode and I think everything's closed and then I'll go to double tap on my phone and all of a sudden it'll start playing that article again or it'll start playing that music. Is that by design or is that something that's not supposed to happen does anybody know this is quentin mm -hmm. um well you know the double tap it's when you double tap it plays the last audio you you had going um it's it's a really weird thing you have to like fully close out so when you do your um go into your the info what they call it your the swipe down menu. Yeah. Um, if you still notice that you have the, um, you know, play and pause and all that in there, anytime you double tap, it's going to play whatever's in there. So, but it generally will do it to the last, whatever the last thing was. So if you were, you know, watching a video on YouTube or playing music, you double tap, it could have been days. I've had it where it's been days and then I'll go and double tap and all of a sudden it starts playing a podcast that I was listening to like three days ago. Yeah. You know? 
and I've had that happen, and it wasn't in my pull down uh, notifications thing because I've been, I go through that pretty regularly. But right. once it starts playing, it pops up in there, <laughs> and I'm not. Yeah. And I said, okay, this is this is different. I think um, it's a talkback thing. I like. I think it's just part of how that is for us when it when you go to double tap. I have found that if you go into the, you know, your recent tab and just clear it, that does help sometimes. Um, I, I'd say about ninety percent of the time that'll help. I've had times when it it didn't help, so. It just all depends, I guess. All right. I have another question. Um, I have sometimes I'm wondering if I'm doing this wrong. I, I, I've gotten really better at talk back um, in the last year, but there's this little I have gaps in my knowledge. And one is when I'm going through text messages and scrolling through and one has a, a link in it and I usually try to bring up the talkback menu because usually it'll put links at the top but it doesn't always know there's a link there for some reason so it doesn't always put links at the top so is there a consistent way of grabbing a link that's embedded within a text message that anybody knows that works really well Martin <laughs> Kurt and I, I wanna, no I want to know too <laughs> I want to say I want to no, know yeah. I, I'm I, laughing uh, because I'm oh, sorry go ahead no go ahead go ahead Oh, I, I'm laughing because I was trying to get on this call literally like 20 minutes ago and Harsh had sent me the link and I couldn't activate it the first like three times. So yeah, I feel your pain. <laughs> Sometimes it'll come up in the talk Mac menu. Sometimes it's like I have to double tap it to highlight it and then it'll come yeah. up. I'm, I'm not sure which one is the right way. So I'm always guessing. Well, yeah, so <laughs> I like, think you have you to change, always guess. Oh, are you changing the rotor? Sorry. No, that's okay. Uh, so it it is a bit odd because sometimes yeah so you'll have to what you have to do is when you're going through your text message there might be a preview that's showing up for that particular link so you have to swipe twice um, because my wife is always sending me links from Amazon and whatnot and if you try if you go right to the text message and you try to do it you try to do the talk back thing links doesn't show up but if you swipe right one more time and then you like there's a little preview there you can either double tap yeah. on that preview or you can go and do the links but yeah it, it doesn't seem to be quite consistent and i'm not quite sure why yeah the previews work well but when it's not a, when there's not a preview it's really hit right. or miss as to whether or not uh, it will pull up. And somebody mentioned the rotor. I don't understand that thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> if anybody knows a tutorial that I can go to to really explain <laughs> it to me on YouTube or somewhere, I've been looking for something to really that really explains it to me well. Because I, I, only thing I know how to do is speed up my talk pack and slow it down and uh, everything else is So yeah, so the way it works on, on Android, it's actually not, a, they don't call it a rotor unfortunately but it so you do you have to do a three fingered swipe either left or right and then that'll go through the I think, I think they call it the reading menu and then you can find things through there um but yeah it's it's a bit more clunky but it it works but the, this is quentin so when you yeah you can you can do the uh, one finger up, down, or down, up, it'll also change the menu. Um, there's a links where it'll search for links, but it doesn't always find those links. <laughs> yeah, nope. I tried that. So how do you, I mean, so I, I'm three fingers swiping and I get to links. Then what do I do? I swipe, do I swipe? I instinctively want to swipe left or right, but that didn't well, do anything. Well, so when you if, change it to that, you'll swipe up or down. With one finger? With yep. one finger. And that right. and and that should look for the links. Yes, it should jump to the link. And so, if I go to characters, then what does it do? Then it'll go one letter at a time. Okay, so just up like, or down, just so, like with using Jaws. Okay. Right, yeah. right. Okay. If you if you have a word called word and you swipe down, it'll you know W O 
R, D, you know, as okay. you're swiping. If you swipe up, it goes the other way. Oh, and that's how. Yeah, the same thing with, yeah. what is it, letter, uh, characters, word, paragraphs, line, lines, headings, paragraphs. Yeah. Headings. Yeah. So please, please, please explain <laughs> containers to me. I don't understand a container other than what I put my food in. So. I don't use them. <laughs> so the way containers work is that there are three different portions on your screen. So you've got your status um, line at the top, and then you got your middle, which is all of your icons or whatever app that you're working in, and then the bottom. But I don't really use the containers, to be honest. But um, does anybody else have some knowledge on that? Because it... I have never I, seen there's I one place I use learning. them often. Um, okay. I use them like, you know, if because I spend way too much of my life on YouTube, right? So, <laughs> yeah. So you you know how on Android phones when you're scrolling through the video, after each video it'll have like an action menu and a go to channel and there's a few little buttons if you're just swiping between the videos from one video to the other like does that make sense mm -hmm. um so with containers you can switch it over to containers and just go video by video i have no idea why but Indeed. but it, it helps a little bit that's kind of cool little trick this is kevin go ahead kevin when you swipe, um, when you're in the text messages, uh, more often than not, well, not more often, but starting more consistently on a Pixel device, you can just double tap on the link and it will activate even if it doesn't recognize, it doesn't make the popping noise that it normally makes. You're able to activate links. I don't know if it's broken and that's why it's working, but it's working on both of my Pixel phones. But if you swipe away from the link and come back to it, um, then you can get that indicator that it has recognized it as a link. Then you can tap once with three fingers and go to the, the links. So if, you actually uh, get a popping noise? Yes, you're supposed to, it's a very light noise. So, you so swipe... when it recognizes it as a link, it will make a popping noise. So you swipe once to the next message and then swipe back and you get the popping noise? Yes. If it doesn't recognize it, um, if you're on the phone or something like that, sometimes that keeps it from recognizing it as a link. And then if all else fails, you can double tap and hold on the link and then go up to where it says copy or share. And then you can just put it in the you can put the link in the Chrome browser or whatever browser you use, and then you can launch it like that. But um, I just noticed that with the if in Android 14 and the talkback, it seems to be just um, launching. You know, if you just double tap on them sometimes, even if it doesn't pop, it's launching some of them. But how do you get to the point where you actually select? I mean, if I double pack, my message has a link in it. So do I have to navigate to the link within the message? So you go the to, yeah, wherever wherever it is in the conversation thread. When you hear it say HTTP, so I have to go by word. I have to go by word. No, well, you're just swiping left and right through, through your messages. You go to the one that says, you know. Amazon shoes or whatever it's if it has if it has a tag on it it's going to read the tag but you're waiting for the part you're just swiping left or right until it says http colon slash zoom.us dot whatever whatever but I have messages where they, they'd say something and then they put a space and then they put a link and then they say something else so it's not like in, in its own message it's... Right. This is Quinn. Yeah. Sometimes that happens when like you get somebody send you a number, mm -hmm. like somebody sends you a phone number within a message or, you know, an address. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, this is my address. And then they put the address and it highlights the address and because if you tap it, you know, it would take you to say like Google Maps or something, whatever your direction app that you use. But a lot of times when you do swipe over some of these messages, it it does not catch 
a link of some sort. Um, and I, I'm, I still haven't figured that out. So what I do is I just use the pass through function and then I'm able to just run my finger over it and it'll just, Ooh, there you go. Pass through function. Pass through. So I set up a key to when I do the gesture, it's, it's a, um, finger gesture. When I do the gesture, I get a little pop and then that tells me I can just tap or do whatever you normally normally would do without talk back. So it basically pauses talk back for a second and I can tap any button. Um that's the easiest way I can explain oh, it. Oh, I've seen yeah, I think I know what you you're know. talking about. I think I, I've seen that um, but I never done anything like that okay yeah and that's it's not hard to do it's not hard to set it's it is a little involved and it would it would take a sec um but that's kind of one of those other option type things when it comes to that or you can do what i used to do <laughs> which is you know double tap and hold go to copy text Go, you know, just like you said, I'll go to a web browser despite how much text is in there. Oh, so you can <laughs> put the I whole thing in there. And then I just start delete. Yep. <laughs> yep. I, that's how I originally was doing it. And that's that can get annoying. So I, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so the, the other thing that I've done, this is Martin, is uh, you can also, like, if they've put the, like, the site on its own text message and it's still not picking up then you can do copy last phrase uh with talkback and then yeah. you can but i i tried that today and they actually um instead of putting slash slash it actually spelled out s-l-a-s-h s-l-a-s-h <laughs> which was really <laughs> annoying what yeah it was weird okay oh, wow. can i ask what type of phone are you using i have a pixel 7 pro Okay. Okay. So you're using the um, Google Messages. Yes, I'm, yeah. using, I'm using okay. Google Messages. Yes. Okay. Hey, this is Hershey. This is Kevin. Um, hey, if Kevin. you're noticing that it's just not launching, and it also depends on if someone actually uses the share sheet to give you that link, that link should be its own separate thing within the message. Um, but if it's just consistently not doing it, um, then you um, you should probably report it. Um, yeah, I mean, some of these messages are coming like like in my my family's group text. You know, my sister sent this thing about something that was on a uh, station that was coming on television tonight, and the link is in her text message, and she uses an iPhone. I don't know if that makes a difference that it's coming from an iPhone, or Android. I don't know. But it's all embedded in her text, and then sudden, then on that same thread, in another time, it'll be something that's separate with its own link. So, and that's another iPhone user in my family. So it's kind of weird that sometimes it's that way. Yeah, it depends on how they share it. Like, side of people probably just copy it and just drop it in. It's probably on the same line as the text, and that's why it's probably not recognizing it. Ah, uh, so it's how um, they put it in so there. So it could be that you have to double tap and hold and copy the whole thing and just put it in the browser and delete the parts you don't need. Okay. Or ask them to share their links better. Well, put, that, put their links at the end of the message instead of embedding it. Yeah, it's like talk, 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 text, 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 then oh, here's a link and then here's some more text, text, text. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. This is yep. Is. Sounds now like this... First thing is go with the dictation, go ahead and get done with what you're saying, or drop the link first and then send that off and then start with your dictation. So pick one first, but you know, pair it up as two different messages at least. So uh Kevin showed me this that trick from one of the episodes months back. And um honestly it works really well. Uh basically how I use it is three finger tap. If I see links in the top of the links or in top of the list of the talkback menu. Then I go ahead and I tap on that. <clears throat> and then I could uh, cipher between how many links are within 
the particular uh, message or thread. Um, the other thing I could do is uh, tap on, uh, what is it, uh, actions. And then I could go to links that way, but it's just a little bit lo one longer step. And um, let me see. Uh, the other way is try to uh, turn off talk back, tap on the link, and then turn talk back on. And then you'll see, if you're low vision, let's just use Discord as an example. You could get away by just turning off talk back, hitting the link, and then you see the blue box and it says, okay, you want to visit the link. And therefore you click on that blue link because you know what that box looks like. But um, that doesn't work for everybody. And um, tapping with three fingers just to, on any type of link, or as, the, as Kevin alluded to the pop, that works really, really well. Yeah. This is Kevin. I wanted go to go back to something that was said earlier. And, um, the pop worked. Oh, I'm sorry. If you need, if you need, <laughs> um, if you, you have to check with your library about the, the, the e-readers. Um, if you have and if you have Android, you're supposed to try to get the Zoom X one. My Zoom X is connected to my phone, and it works just fine. And you can do a Braille input, and you can have Braille display. So if you, um, I guess each library has the one that they use. So in Texas, we have Zoom X. But some libraries have access to both. But if you have an Android phone, you want to get a ZoomX e-reader. So humanware not worky oh. worky, ZoomX worky work. That's good to know. <laughs> I should have mine this week, actually. Yeah. <laughs> this Quinn. So, oh, sorry. The frustrating thing about the humanware one is you can plug it into your phone and use it over USB. But the Braille is so slow that way. I would not recommend it to anyone who values their sanity. Um, <laughs> Windows 1998. It's like you hit the pan button, wait a second, it scrolls. I am reading this message from Hershey. You know, like like it's like that. Like Horrible. I, I got wow. asked this question the other day. Is like, wow, you, the screen reader is fast and... You know, once you start getting used to something at a certain tempo, it's really hard to go backwards. And um, I'm sure once you people get used to learning Braille or even typing with, with Braille with having six keys, uh, much simpler, much simpler tasks at, the, at hand. Nice. This is Quinn. I, I, when I first started with like TalkBack, you know, it was all slow and, you know, just reading it to me. Then I got to where... I was speeding it up, like you said, and you get used to that. But then now, when I talk to people, like real people, I'm like, how can I turn them up so they just hurry up and talk to me faster? <laughs> like, you're talking to my family. They hate it. They they get mad. And they're like, it's because of your talk back. I'm like, Please record yeah. this as a video. Send it to me, and I'll be at 2x, 3x. Yeah. <laughs> I speed. I speed. This is Renee. I speed up every podcast. I speed up every audio book. I I, I just don't nope. have just don't have uh, the, the tolerance for going too slow. And I'm not even it. real fast talk back back listener or you know screen reader listener. But I still don't. I, oh boy! Just wait until that screen reader catches up to your mind, and then it's going to be everything is going to collide. Yeah, there's a few work colleagues I'd like to speed up. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this is Quentin. Well, and I, when I first started on the PC, well, actually, no, someone was like, hey, you can use TalkBack. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I first started using it. I'm like, you know, you do the finger gestures and everything else. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I got it. And then I went on the PC and I was using, well, I started like with narrator and then I jumped to NVDA and, you know, I, I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning. So then I come back to the, to my phone and I'm like, okay, I got this, you know, and you're swiping real quick. And I'm like, I have to turn this up, you know, so you turn it up and everything. Well, for a while, if I went from my phone to my tablet, for some unknown reason, it, it, it didn't work. Like I had to slow down on the tablet 
it was really <laughs> weird. It was like, yeah. wait, I'm reading the same thing, you know? So it just kind of, as the devices, even my watch now, I'm like, okay, you know, it's 10 21. I'm like, nah, you, you need to speed up. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is Renee. Uh, speaking of talking, has anyone ever experienced your talk back? You're reading something, you're listening to something, and then you swipe to something else and it gets a different accent? Oh, yes. But that's because, yeah, that's a website. Um, because it, it, the language codes on the website could could throw that off. Also, it depends what screen reader, uh, uh, what text to speech that you're using. But some of them can speak different languages as well. So that's that's what's happening there too. But it's all talkback. So why does it change? Because it finds the codes within the uh, within the website. So when you're coding a website, you can actually say, okay, um, this is English US. But this particular spot is French, so we're going to change. So what happens is uh, TalkBack will say, okay, well, this is French, so we're going to change the text-to-speech on you. <laughs> so that actually sounds right. But <laughs> that, This is Richard. I had that same problem, Renee, where I'm listening to text or I'm listening to an email, and I do the swipe, and it's saying, you know, the time and date. This email is for Richard such and such, and it's about a meeting, and I try to scroll to where I can hear the rest of it and get to the rest of it. And it says, the meeting is on... I'm like, what did you just say? Wow. And then I scroll, yeah. you know, I, I try to go up even further, and then all of a sudden I hear, I'm like, uh, wait, you just went through two different languages here. Why did you do that? Wow. Mine is um, a British accent. I don't know why. It's like it's, like it's from the UK or something. <laughs> well, what happens, Renee, I think it's actually in the gesture settings because when I, 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 I really could not get this back to English, nothing against the languages, but every single thing on the phone changed to a different language. Even what people were looking at, this is people that had sight, we're saying this is coming up Japanese <laughs> on your phone. Everything is Japanese, and I'm like, yeah. Well, touch the phone. They're not speaking Japanese, so they touch the phone, and it's speaking French though. And That's it's weird. Like, that is so weird. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. when they corrected it, they told me it's in settings, it's in gestures and stuff, and you will find language and gestures in there, and you could literally scroll it's how you end up swiping there's three fingers or a swipe and i'm like oh no wonder why this thing keeps talking to me like it's you know i i only know a few words in giant chinese i only know a few words in spanish i only know a few words in spanish and in russian and none of them are good they're not <laughs> so yeah. i don't know what this thing is talking to me and i don't none of the the words i know in other languages they're they're not good words to you right. so but so the, um it's the in, it's in the um um it's in uh, um uh the the gestures i guess how you scroll up or how you swipe it would it automatically change is the language so go into settings and see if you can change that that's what well, i had is, to do this is jackie um you can turn off language detection and mine, I could never get it to detect other languages very well. They had, they used to have two settings. It was aggressive and conservative. Oh, or yes. Correct. Yes. That's, that's exactly yes. Right. I haven't checked it in ages and ages and ages. Yeah. But if it's changing on you too much, Talk which is the settings. opposite problem I have, um, you, have you, can turn, you can turn it off completely. The other thing um, you can do, this is Martin. The other thing you can do is... Um, under text to speech, instead of using system language, you can actually specify U.S. English, and that that will also fix things as well. So, what my talkback's been doing, Kurt here, um, is I have been reading a lot about the Apple Vision Pro, the new game-changing Arkansas headset. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> because because <laughs> for some reason. 
Yeah, you got it. It's it's my text to speech dictionary. It abbreviates AR as Arkansas. <laughs> so- can you turn that <laughs> off? Because I know in I- other things you can change that. Like, but I remember those old book players. My favorite sentence was from a book one time was we Saturday there all day until the Sunday had set in the West. <laughs> That's hey, great. Because you couldn't you couldn't turn that off on the book sense. <laughs> so and on Android, I think you can turn I can't remember if I can turn off abbreviations. It depends. I'm sure I can. The question speech. is why would I want to? It's so fun. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> It depends which text-to-speech engine you're using because you can use different ones and they react differently. Um, so yeah, it, um, they have different options. So when you go under text-to-speech, if you hit settings, you can actually turn on and off a lot of stuff in there. So you might want to look into that. This is cool. Jan. Yeah, because my, my um. Uh, abbreviations always say like instead of doctor so and so is drive Johnson, you know. Right. <laughs> the 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 this is Richard. The the text to speech when you use Google in the voice input, I I, I don't I, I, I it's I like it and it's funny, but yet you got to really be careful and know who you're talking to that has a sense of humor. <laughs> when I first started using the voice Google to send a message, I this is somewhat of a suggestion for people to be careful because it will listen to your voice and say what you're saying. However, if there is music playing or there's a television playing and it says something, it's going to put it in that message too. Yep, yep. And, and so when yes. I had... I have an aid service for my disability. She's doing help and she's doing the laundry. She's like, where do you normally put the soap when you're here? And what I had said myself was I normally put the soap up on the machine on the top. Well, I did not double check the message that was sent to her. I am not going to say what the message sent because there were uh-huh. a foul, few foul words in there. And only because I had rap music playing and it picked up a few of those words. Gotcha. When the aide came back to me and said, Richard, why are you talking to me like this? And I'm like, what do you mean? So I looked in my messages and I'm like, I didn't. And I did not know this. So now she says, okay, let me see what's going on because I know this isn't you, Richard. This isn't like you. So she's doing it herself. She's using the talk back. She's doing it. And all of a sudden, she sends me a few dirty words and a few dirty sentences. And she's like, I didn't say that to you. Well, you were standing right here. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. You got between a Samsung uh, keyboard and you got the keyboard. keyboard right. It, it, yeah. it didn't dawn on us. It, it finally dawned on both of us that it, the, the text, the speech where you're talking is picking up the rap song as well as the TV and Choose, your music, in. Choose your music, Richard. Choose your music. All right. Well, All this right, point, y'all. All right, y'all. This store. is a great conversation, but we are at the end of our show for time. Uh, indeed. Yes. So I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to thank everybody for the great conversation and the the great feedback. Um. I want to let everybody know our next meeting will be on March 20th, uh, 2024. That'll be the third Wednesday in March. So, um, y'all, great, great show. All right. Thank you. It was fun. Thank Thank you so much. (laughs) Y'all be safe out there. You too. Watch them dictations. (laughs) Watch them dictations. (laughs) (laughs) But it's so fun doing it that way. I I don't know. I've had a couple that have made it seem like I was a pedophile or something. Oh, my gracious. (laughs) So I'm like, yeah.